Well, there's no compliance issue, right? There's no compliance issue here, and so yeah, that's 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 correct. All right, so give me a uh, doctors love clinical scenarios. Let's play the scenario game. Patient walks in and presents to you saying, Doc, I've got this rash and I'm not feeling well. What do you say? What do you do? And then what's your next move? Well, say so, you know, a typical patient will come in and say, I have this rash, which may be cellulitis, for example. And the patient will say, well, you know, I fell, I had a small skin cut, and, and then I developed this redness that now covers my entire leg. And so that's clearly far more than 75 square centimeters, which we said is about the size of a baseball. And the patient says it's painful, and I haven't been feeling well, and I'm fatigued, and I have diabetes, and, and, um, and I started to have a fever in the past two days. I went to my primary care physician. My primary care physician gave me Bactrim, um, and, and it continues to expand despite of the Bactrim. And now the patient is in the emergency department, says to you, what can you do better than my primary care physician? And so, you know, the evaluation would include whether the patient is septic, whether the patient is hemodynamically stable. This patient has diabetic. Just make sure that his diabetes is not out of control. If someone can, you know, make some food at home for the next two days, and if the answer is yes for all of those, you could you could basically treat the patient with IV antibiotics. That would be a typical patient that I would say 90 times of 100 would be admitted for IV vancomycin and could be discharged 90 times of 100 just because of their presentation. Right. So that could be one patient. All right. But you know, you, you go down the emergency department, and the one person you don't want to see is that 30-year-old male who is obese, because you look at them, they have a, a skin infection, you cannot give them enough vancomycin to get them to a therapeutic level. And if you are, you're giving it three times a day, four times a day, you're going upwards of 1,500 milligrams, 2,000 milligrams. It's not gonna be something that's transferable to an outpatient. So I, I think, uh, you know, if you have certain candidates, certain patients, that's always an ideal one for me. So those are, those are the good candidates. Another, another group, by the way, that's very, very attractive for those antibiotics are people who, uh, some IV drug users, and we see a lot of skin infections in IV drug users. Sure. As you know, IV drug use requires, you know, needles, and those needles can cause infections at the site, and we see a lot of those people. And there is a particular issue with, with this patient population that um, you know, we're very limited with pick lines and midlines in this patient population. Very often these are young people who otherwise are healthy and they don't want to be in a hospital. And so for them, being able to give them, to infuse them once and, 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 and get rid of the entire course of antibiotics is very successful. And sometimes we actually will do that also among inpatients, because we have inpatients who require 10 days of therapy, they've been there for three days, they are fine, they could be discharged, but they need seven more days, we right. can't do the peak lines, and so we can send them to our infusion center, our wound center to the next day and, and give them an infusion, and by that, we benefit them because we shorten their time in the hospital and, um, and they get that that's, adequate That's therapy. always one of our top targets. You look at those IV drug abusers, they, if they are admitted to your hospital, what do they do? They sit. You know, they're, they're nightmares to try and get out of the hospital. So it's, it's a great target in that population. And you're, you're both being very gentle about this, but I'll be a little less. Who wants to send an IV drug abuser home with an IV? No, that's, that's definitely a problem. And so, you know, most hospitals will not do that, you know, from a um, risk management perspective, because, right. um, you, you know, those lines can be used for many different purposes, and you don't want them to be used in a way that's going to risk the patient's life. Or, or just allow them, but hospitals just don't want to be seen as a portal of entry for illegal drugs, right? Yeah, we, we don't do it. And so, you know, you, you walk by that patient's room and they're sitting there with their legs crossed watching television most, day, most days. You know, they don't really have another reason to, to remain as an inpatient. So you can get the IV out. There, there's no temptation here to use that IV for illicit purposes. You give them one dose and go. Also, it seems to me that in my experience, anyway, the IV drug abusers have terrible veins. You find one vein, you use it once, and we're done. Yeah, that's absolutely, that's, that's absolutely is the case, yeah. yeah. Well, spoken as an inner city doctor, that's one of the things I would think of. But, but, but again, the bottom line is that I think that benefits them the best because they don't, they find themselves locked in the hospital. Maybe they're watching TV, but locked in the hospital for an infection that could otherwise be treated out of the hospital absolutely. if they were not IV drug users. And so there's no reason why they would get, you know, differential. Sure. And so I mean, why, not, be why not have a win-win? Better for the hospital and better for the patient, whether the patient's an IVDA or not, Absolutely. right? So uh, great new drugs, uh, great ideas, and not quite as complicated as what we were discussing earlier about having a whole center and bringing people back for periodic readministration. I had no idea you could just give it once for two weeks. That's really impressive.